the internet is not just TV, right? The internet actually has people who can um, interact with you and who can be invited to, uh, to um, engage with your, your brand. And so when you start creating video formats that also have interactivity, they have um, uh, buttons, they have uh, ex things that can expand, you can look up dealer locations, you can look up um, uh, um, show times and so on and so forth, that becomes a very, very compelling experience, both for uh, brand and also for uh, direct response style advertisements. So um, that's something, if that's something you want to enable, Vast alone isn't going to do it. You're going to need a common language for the video player to talk to the ad unit, and that's VPaid. So um, I'm going to let Payam talk a little bit about the adoption of these standards. All right. Thank you, Tag. Uh, good morning. It's great to be here. It's great to talk about video, which is, uh, of course, the most exciting piece of the advertising uh, space. Um, I don't know if you guys saw the recent survey that eMarketer put out, I think it was one or two weeks ago, um, but it turns out that we've actually reached a turning point, or we will very, very soon in the video space. Uh, and the survey said that more than half of all publishers expect to generate more revenue from video ads than any other ad format next year, by 2012. Not just the broadcasters or the video portals or the networks, but all publishers. And so we all knew this was coming, but it's actually becoming more and more of a reality. And even if you look at the numbers for 2011, we actually think that growth year over year is going to be slightly over 50%, which is higher than a lot of the predictions and forecasts we heard earlier this year and last year. Now, despite all of this growth and, you know, videos on fire, it's going gangbusters, uh, there are some challenges. And one of the biggest challenges that publishers and vendors and, and advertisers tell us is that standardization isn't at the point where we expect it to be. There's still some challenges, uh, and that's why we have Vast and VPAID, right? Vast and VPAID are supposed to make this process easy, frictionless, turnkey, use whatever your favorite term is. Now, there are still some challenges with Vast and VPAID. It was designed about two years ago, we released Vast 2, uh, and it was designed in a relatively flexible and loose way because we were still trying to figure out which scenarios are going to take off. And so there was some purposeful flexibility built into these specs. Now, that also means that there's a lot of interpretation that can take place when you're trying to figure out, well, I have Vast 2. How do I implement it in my ad server? What is my video player going to do? What if I get multiple creatives back in the Vast response? Which ones do I play? In which order? Uh, what about when an error happens in the video player? Which tracking pixels do I ping? Do I send error codes back? There's a lot of stuff that wasn't perfectly defined or very tightly defined for good reason. And we've matured in it as an industry. We've learned a lot. We've figured out which standards um, have which kind of holes in them. And we've tried to tighten those up in the next versions of Vast VPaid and this new beast that we're calling VMAP. Um, and so let me kind of go over some of, the, some of the principles that we are using to put out these new specs. Now, we looked at which scenarios are becoming more and more popular. And we try to incorporate those into VAST 3 and VPay 2 and make them much tighter so that it's very, very clear when you're implementing VAST 3 what you're supposed to do on the serving side and what you're supposed to do on the video player side. So one of the scenarios that has become more and more popular, and we'll, we'll hear a lot about this from our, from our folks that are coming on stage, is cross-platform scenarios, right? Video is exploding on mobile. It's exploding on connected TVs. And when you're in an environment that doesn't support flash, there are additional things you have to take into account. So this is a very small thing, for example, the media file attributes. But if you look at VAST today, there's a MIME type. And the MIME type describes the container of the media file. It doesn't tell you anything about the codec. So if you want to figure out on a connected TV, well, which of these media fi files should I play back, which one's going to work, doesn't always work as easily as you would expect it to do. So what we've done is in VAST 3 is we've added support for media file attributes. And there is uh, another standards body called the IETF, the Internet Engineering Task Force, that has already come up with a fantastic way to describe media files in more detail. Thank God we didn't have to come up with that so one. So we just stole it from them, right? We shamelessly stole it from the IETF, and it's going to be part of VAST 3. And so it's going to tell you exactly this file supports this codec. Just one example of how we're trying to make some of the most common scenarios um, more turnkey with VAST 3. Another example is VPaid, right? We want to make sure VPaid doesn't only work in Flash, but also works in HTML5 and JavaScript environments. And so there is a new flavor of VPaid. It just kind of describes how VPaid should work in JavaScript and HTML5 that's also coming out. Um, let me see. Something else that we added to VAST3 is support for skippable ads. 
Uh, skippable ads have really picked up this year. Uh, to quote a journalist, they're growing like a weed. Uh, if you look on YouTube, about 40% of all of our in-stream ads are skippable, up from 0% earlier this year. And a lot of our publishers are, are seeing similar kind of shifts towards skippable. So VAST3 is going to have support for skippable ads.